Hi, I'm Dr. Larry Eichenfield. I'm Chief of Pediatric and Adolescent Dermatology at Rady Children's Hospital in San Diego and Professor of Pediatrics and Dermatology at the University of California San Diego School of Medicine. Psoriasis is a complex disease. It's an inflammatory disease that can manifest in the skin and sometimes in the joints and it's a disease that has a significant genetic influence. So by genetic influence, I mean it's more common in family members who've had psoriasis, but it's not a specific genetic disease where if I have it, I know half my kids are going to have it or all my kids are going to have it. In particular, psoriasis will, will have very discreet raised pink plaques on the skin. So there'll be areas that are, that are scaly, um, and you can sort of tell what the involved area is as compared to the uninvolved area. As I said, it can be present anywhere on the body. It can be present in the scalp. Often very thick, flaking scalp disease can be um, a psoriasis. Um, and um, if individual, if you have something that's unusual and that are these pink scaly plaques, sometimes with scratch marks or these bleeding spots, it's appropriate to consider whether you have psoriasis and to have an expert help you make that determination. The psoriatic arthritis is a type of arthritis and arthritis is, a, is essentially a disease of the joint. So any of your joints, your wrists, your elbows, your knees, your ankles, can have a variety of symptoms with swelling, pain, warmth, tenderness, all of that can be a sign of true inflammation of the joint, which we call uh, arthritis. And in the context of psoriasis and uh, joint swelling, we're especially uh, worried about psoriatic arthritis. Unfortunately, there's no permanent cure for psoriasis right now, but there's a broad set of therapies that are highly effective at controlling psoriasis. There's a broad set of medicines we use to control psoriasis, and they, these range from topical creams and ointments or solutions that you put on the skin to control the symptoms of psoriasis to very, very potent medicines that you can take by mouth or sometimes by even injections that have a profound anti-inflammatory effect and similarly can control both psoriasis or psoriatic arthritis. There are definitely cases where individuals didn't even know they had psoriasis and yet during pregnancy it will appear. And that's something where clearly they're going to need to have help expertise in a, a skin specialist to make that diagnosis. That's one of the peculiarities of psoriasis. It can, can get better and worse for a variety of different reasons, many of which we don't understand. Clearly we're going to avoid methotrexate during pregnancy, methotrexate works by sort of stopping how cells reproduce each other. And here we are at a time where we're growing, trying to grow a healthy baby, and that's something you definitely want to stay away from. So there's a list of medicines that are specifically contraindicated, meaning we're going to avoid them during pregnancy. And then there's a large list of medicines where we're uncertain if it impacts on pregnancy. Generally, topical medicines being used for psoriasis are safer. But I almost don't even want to generalize about that because there's a broad set of topical medicines, some of which don't get absorbed at all, so there's very little exposure to the bloodstream and therefore they would be of low risk to the fetus, and others where a significant amount can get uh, absorbed. So while generally topical medicines may be safer uh, for the treatment of, of psoriasis during pregnancy, you can't lump them all together like that. And, and even with the topical medicines, um, it might be appropriate to discuss what the plan will be for use during pregnancy. I do think that doing organized studies where people collect information to figure out the relative safety of medicines will be very important. And that will have a much better database to, to tell our, our pregnant women what's safe to use.